Hello students, welcome back to our science classes and we are continuing our lesson coal and petroleum. So in our previous classes we have studied about the formation of coal and petroleum. Now it's the time to study consequences of excessive mining and use of coal and petroleum. As we know coal and petroleum are exhaustible sources of energy or they are non-renewable natural resources. We can consider it as uh, energy sources or resources. So we can say that they are non-renewable natural resources or exhaustible natural resources. So point by point we can learn what are the consequences. First one, as they are non as they are non-renewable source of energy, they will be get depleted or get exhausted in nearby future. So, if they exhaust in nearby future, what happen? We will, uh, it causes energy crisis. It causes energy crisis. Energy crisis is a situation where demand for energy will be more and its production will be less. We know today's 90% of the today's energy need is met with coal and petroleum. If a coal and petroleum, if once it is exhausted, we cannot meet our energy needs. That is the first, uh, first consequences, energy crisis. Next one, we know coal is mined uh, coal is mined deeper inside the earth. Uh, imagine that you are mining more and more coal from the earth. Then what happens? It will create large hollow space, right? It will create large hollow space. As it creates large hollow space, it causes the land collapse or la it may cause land collapse and minor earthquakes. Hope it is clear. So it can cause minor earthquakes. And next one. We know petroleum. Petroleum is available again more deeper inside the earth. We know petroleum also we pump out with the help of powerful, powerful pumps. We mine out it with the powerful pumps. So from petroleum also imagine that we are mining out or we are pumping out more and more petroleum. What happens? There also it creates large hollows. If the large hollows are there that too deeper inside the earth, it can cause minor or major earthquakes. Hope it is clear. So, do, uh, these are the consequences. First one, main one, it can cause energy crisis. Next one, it can cause minor earthquakes. And due to petroleum, uh, petroleum uh, pumping, it can cause minor or major earthquakes. These are the main crisis or consequences of petroleum or coal mining. Next one, now we can see if we are what are the problems it occurs when we are using coal or petroleum problems we have seen now they are the problems associated with the mining of coal and petroleum now we are seeing when we are using it that too it is there in our heading what are the consequences of use of coal and petroleum if we are using coal and petroleum how it affects our environment so when we are using petroleum mainly we are using it as a source of energy so we are it causes the burning of coal and petroleum as a result it produces carbon dioxide carbon monoxide oxides of nitrogen oxides of sulfur then next vapors of unburnt hydrocarbons and smoke these are the products produced or these are the byproducts we get on burning coal or petroleum Petroleum means petrol, diesel, kerosene, like that. Any of the petroleum products when burned, we get the same things. We can I, I will say the things once again. What are the things? First one, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, oxides of nitrogen, oxides of sulfur, uh, vapors of unbanned hydrocarbon, and last one is smoke. These are the byproducts we get. Now we can learn how these affect us. How these byproducts affect us. Byproducts means we get the energy. As a result, we get these byproducts also. And now let's see how it affect us we are uh, first one let us see carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide if the ca amount of carbon dioxide is increasing in the atmosphere directly it causes greenhouse effect what does it cause it causes greenhouse effect greenhouse effect means it is a phenomenon in which infrared infrared rays in the solar light it will be trapped by this greenhouse gases means greenhouse gases means gases which causes greenhouse effect they are known as greenhouse gases carbon dioxide is the main one carbon dioxide methane sulfur dioxide these gases causes greenhouse effect so greenhouse effect means what is the situation these gases they will trap the infrared rays infrared rays are responsible for heat so if these gases are holding these infrared rays and they are not allowing to uh, send to atmosphere or space if they are they are holding that infrared rays as they are holding the infrared rays what happens heat will be more in that area 
hope it is clear that effect is known as greenhouse effect so increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere it causes greenhouse effect and if there is greenhouse effect we told that temperature of the earth increases or average temperature on the earth increases that phenomenon is known as global warming so carbon dioxide it causes greenhouse effect greenhouse effect it causes global warming we know every year average temperature on the earth increases hikes if the reason up to one level reason is increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the air and it causes greenhouse effect greenhouse effect causes global warming and now let's see if there is global warming what happens global warming global warming means average temperature of the earth increases it causes the polar ice to melt if there is um, global warming what happens it causes the polar ice to melt if the polar ice melt what happens uh, himalaya ice hills or ice caps when it melts what happens uh, it causes the low lying areas flooded it causes the flooding of low lying areas we know if the temperature increases the ice caps of himalaya it will start to melt if it is melted what happens it causes the flooding in the himalayan rivers if the, if it happens what happens most of the low lying areas in india it will be under water so next one is this increasing the temperature it will affect the monsoon increasing the temperature will affect the monsoon and also it affect the crop production or it also affect the crop pattern do you remember in the first lesson we have studied about kharif crops and rabi crops kharif crops they are the crops which we grow in rainy season so rainy season means we are cultivating a month june july suppose if you are not getting the rain we can't grow these uh, kharif crops after kharif crops if it is suppose we are getting the rain in august september if we grow that time if we grow the crops in that time we won't get much benefit and also it will affect the uh, next crop what is that rabi crops am i correct so in such a way it will affect the crop pattern also so what are the problems of uh, excessive carbon dioxide producing in the atmosphere first one uh, it causes greenhouse effect connected to it uh, greenhouse effect causes global warming global warming causes the polar ice to melt it causes the flooding of low lying areas and uh, also it affect the monsoon and crop pattern these are the problems associated with the excessive carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and now we are going to learn about the problems associated with carbon monoxide so carbon monoxide it is not like carbon dioxide carbon monoxide is highly dangerous highly dangerous means the inhalation of more amount of carbon dioxide can cause even death so you will get it seriousness by inhaling more and more carbon dioxide nobody will die but if you inhale more carbon monoxide it will result in death how does it let us see carbon monoxide we know carbon monoxide it is a by product produced while burning coal or petroleum usually what what happens in our body when usually we are inhaling oxygen that oxygen goes to lungs and from there it mixes with blood and it forms oxyhemoglobin remember the name oxyhemoglobin that oxyhemoglobin circulate throughout our body and reaches uh, it uh, reaches each and every part and each and every cell gets oxygen okay so if you are inhaling carbon monoxide what happens if you are inhaling carbon monoxide that carbon monoxide will go to the lungs and will this carbon monoxide will combine with the blood and it forms carboxyhemoglobin instead of oxyhemoglobin here it is formed carboxyhemoglobin once carboxyhemoglobin is formed that blood won't be able to carry oxygen okay so in our body the cells won't get the oxygen because already carboxyhemoglobin is formed if the carboxyhemoglobin is formed that blood it won't be able to carry oxygen and our cells millions of cells in our body won't get oxygen as a result it causes suffocation suffocation means breathing difficulty and if we are inhaled more carbon monoxide it will result in death so remember carbon monoxide is more dangerous than carbon dioxide so now let us see what are the problems associated with oxides of sulfur and nitrogen so oxides of sulfur and nitrogen they causes a respiratory problem and acid rain they causes respiratory problems and acid rain about this acid rain in the coming lesson we will study more detail in sixth lesson we are we will study much details of acid rain now remember it causes respiratory problems and acid rain so acid rain it causes the damage or corrosion of lime lime means 
calcium compounds. It causes the process of the corrosion of calcium compounds and metallic structures.